What's up, you guys? It's been a long time, you know, since uh, I like sat down. The funny thing is, I don't ever really do sit down videos. It's all vlogs. So this is a change of pace. I think I said that in my last video that I did something college related. But look, Lewis and Clark College. There's a huge lack of student information on Lewis and Clark College, unlike bigger name schools. And so you don't really get much information until you get there. I thought it'd be interesting for incoming students to be able to hear a student's perspective on the FAQs that you can find online. I'm just gonna take you through some of the questions that I wanted answered and that you probably want answered. First, campus living related questions. And you may have read some stuff in the little booklet thing that comes when you get accepted. But this one is, what amenities are available in the residence halls? The residence halls have kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms, common areas and if you're into cooking the kitchen doesn't have anything other than like the sink of the stove the counter space there are cabinets some halls you can get away with leaving stuff in there like anywhere else people like to take things so you don't want to leave your electric kettle in the kitchen because it's either going to get broken or stolen and that's the sad truth. So there aren't any utensils, pots, pans, whatever else you might want. Laundry's free. Common areas, some are good, some are not so good. Some have been redone and have new furniture and others are pretty old. It's kind of hit or miss. I think there are vending machines in every hall. People don't really use them very often. People tend to use the vending machines in the academic buildings more. Next question, is storage available in the residence halls? Technically, yes. It's not the best. I would recommend getting a unit with your friends off campus for the summer um, and finding someone with a car to drive you with your stuff. The problem is there are just a lot of rules and things you have to do beforehand in order to be able to use the on-campus summer storage. Oh, let's talk about meal plans. We are catered by Bon Appetit. So our dining hall is Fields Dining Hall, but everyone calls it the Bone. During NSO, which is New Student Orientation, you will probably hear this, but just a heads up, if someone says, oh, let's go Bone, it's totally PG. It means let's go eat at the Bone together. The two years you're required to live on campus, you're required to have a meal plan. Most people have the 14 flex, which means you get 14 meals a week. I think your meals reset Monday morning. So it goes from Monday till Sunday dinner. You have 14 meal swipes. Flex points are great, but you can only use them at Maggie's and the Dove Coat. You can flex people in at the bone. Like if, say your mom comes to visit and she wants to eat at the dining hall, it's like $8 of your flex points. You can't use more than one swipe at a meal time. I also forgot to mention that with the 14 flex, you have 150 flex points, and that is per semester. From fall to spring, your extra points that you don't use do carry over, but after spring, they do not carry over to the next year's fall semester. And I think I mentioned this later, but you can also use your flex points at the Troom, which is the trail room. Another question is, what is the bathroom basically situation like? In most halls, it's co-ed, which really like it might seem weird at first, but like if you have a sibling, you've probably shared the bathroom with your sibling your whole lives. So it's not that weird. I will say I did have a girls only bathroom last year, just like by chance and it was much cleaner than the co-ed. Sorry boys, you're a little dirty. I would highly recommend shower shoes. Two, you definitely want a shower caddy. There are places to keep your shower caddy in the bathroom and people don't really steal your bathroom stuff. I don't know why people will steal kitchen stuff but they won't steal bathroom stuff. It's beyond me, you know? Like I, don't, I just don't know. Co-ed bathrooms have a much sturdier lock on the shower doors in my like female only 
one, it was just a curtain. Some halls have a spot where you can keep your towel. Oh, random side note, there are drinking fountains in all of the halls. Some get the water bottle filler. That's pretty sick. Um, I don't know if there are really any more FAQs, but I'm gonna make up some. So, I don't know if when you see this you can still apply, but if you didn't sign up for an NST, new student trip, do it. It's worth the money. It's seriously the best thing I could have done. My best friends at school are from my NST. NSTs, you basically get to go on a like adventure vacation and make really awesome connections. You make like friends with other incoming students you make friends with your leaders. It's really awesome to have connections going in with upperclassmen that you feel comfortable with. They're like your big sister. Also, College Outdoors slaps. From my perspective, one of the biggest like clubs slash organizations on campus. Um, it's really awesome. They do trips like every weekend. Most of them are pretty affordable and they set you up with all the gear so you don't have to like go in having anything or having experience really. And the College Outdoors office is directly across from the mail room, which is in Templeton, which is a really confusing building. If you get lost, don't feel embarrassed. There are a ton of other clubs at LC. I personally am not currently involved in that many, which is like kind of embarrassing. Go to the club fair thing, it's awesome. Sign up for a bunch of stuff, get all the emails. Another thing is new student orientation. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of lame. It's important, but it's kind of lame. Yeah, I mean, you just, it's orientation. You walk around with some strangers that you're probably gonna have class with. Don't judge the school by your leader, but you know, it's kind of weird, but participate, do the NSO stuff, you know? Like it's, it's lame, but everyone else is doing it too. I think it's time to discuss the bone. There's this thing about the bone. I don't know what it is about what they make, but when you come to Lewis and Clark, you're gonna have the bone shits. Everyone gets it, but no one talks about it. So if you're having interesting bowel movements, it's totally normal. <laughs> the bone is pretty repetitive. They try to do new stuff, and I think sometimes it just flops. So they just stick to what they know. There's a lot of pasta, a lot of rice. There's always a salad bar in the morning, a like fruit thingy. Um, I'm not gonna try to explain how they have honeydew and cantaloupe year round. Maybe I'll do a whole video on like dining hall hacks. Cause I kind of have like done some cool stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if you're vegetarian, I wish you good luck. Come find me, we'll talk about it. They do a lot of soy curls, not good. There's a lot of tofu. I try not to eat too much soy. So it can be really difficult for me. But you know, I mean overall like it's good food. If you were really spoiled at home with your food, you'll probably be disappointed, but I mean, what could you expect? What I like to do about eating is, I know my friend's schedules, we plan ahead for the week. Usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the same schedule for everyone, and then Tuesday and Thursday are the days that people have classes that are different. We like to meet in what we call the lobby. It's not really the lobby, but it's like the area that you go into before you like swipe in. It's good to like go in, you grab a table. People don't steal stuff from the tables. It's literally only the kitchen. You go and get your food, get out. That way you don't do what we call the bone stare. It's when you're coming out of the food area you have your plate and you stand there and you're just, you, you look so sad. If you go in alone, you're gonna do a lone bone. You need to like scope out where you're gonna go. They only serve two meals on the weekend. The brunch for Saturday is always the same. Brunch for Sunday is always the same, which is why it can get boring. But Portland is a brunch city. So like get out there and try some new stuff. We can talk about the actual like halls. There's SOA which is Stuart, Odell, and Aiken. They're some of the older dorms. Stuart, the pipes are loud. That doesn't really make sense until you hear it, but the pipes are loud. Um, but Stuart has a gym and all of SOA has the same swipe access. So if you're in Aiken or Odell, you can swipe into SOA and use the gym. Something else I forgot to mention is that each 
building complex has a different swipe access so forest dorms can swipe into any forest dorm but you can't swipe into any other complex like Platt Howard or Copeland. There are the forest dorms which I think there are six of two are upperclassmen dorms their like main common area is like a whole different building it's called tamarack and downstairs there's like a little like cafe that sometimes can be like a concert venue they call it the coop and then there's the garden and then there are the apartments like in the same area as forest Platt and Howard, which are like the artsy dorms. Platt has the plateau connected to it, which is the art studio type of thing. I've only ever been in there for our drag shows, which I would highly recommend. If you live in Platt Howard, you have free access to the plateau. And if you don't, there's like a $5 membership or something like that. It's pretty reasonable. So then there's Copeland it is the biggest dorm and it's typically housing a lot of athletic students. It's like rowdiest overall. Copeland has a really big and new common area. It's fancy, but it's also like not that comfortable. So what is Maggie's and what is the dove code? So Maggie's, part of it is like a convenience store type of thing. Um, you can get some groceries and snacks. For higher price, yes, but the convenience is what you're paying for. Um, and then the other half is like a cafe type of area. They've got like your typical like coffee, tea, pastries. And then in the evenings, they have bowls you can do like a meal swipe for. The Dove Coat is another really hidden spot that's gonna be hard to find. It's by the old like carriage house and it's down some steps. They have like breakfast burritos, breakfast sandwiches. They're open early in the morning, but they close at like 2.30. The trail room is another place where you can use your flex points. You can also swipe in. It's more of like a grab and go type of place. You can take your food to go from there, which you can't from the bone unless you're like super special. They have pizza, burgers, salads, soups, a sandwich bar in there, which is pretty good. Um, a lot of people wonder about undergrad research. It's totally available, but it's really up to you to make it happen. Also, just going to office hours in general, really beneficial. Even if you just go like the first two weeks just to meet your professor, like for real, they see that you care. Oh, also when you choose a small school, part of it is because you want that potential for student professor relationships and it really depends on the professor. But the smaller classes, like last semester, my Spanish professor, Cecilia, invited the whole class over to her house to make empanadas. To have a relationship with your professor outside of the classroom is really special for your learning. Another question is how is it with the school being so small? It depends on the person. I know a lot of people that said like, oh, I wanna transfer because they feel trapped but we have the city at our fingertips. The fix is really easy, but if you are a small fish, big pond type of person, then probably transfer. It's just not gonna be the school for you. You're probably going to recognize everyone. If you're trying to go grocery shopping, you'll have the opportunity to go to Zoo Pans, which is kind of like a small, bougie Whole Foods, and Fred Meyer. Fred Meyer is connected to, insert here, because I don't remember, I don't know, I might just stop it there because I think I've given you guys a lot of information and if you have any more questions, definitely ask me. Um, I'd love to either make another video like this or um, just talk more about Lewis and Clark. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.